Hi, I'm Daphne Richards. Our question this week is on composting and bed preparation. Why should you add compost to beds and when should you add it? Adding compost to beds is a great way to build the soil and keep it healthy. Most people add compost to the soil, tilling in two to four inches as recommended, when they first build new garden beds. But you can also add it every year or even seasonally, depending on the situation. Once you've built the bed and established the plants, you can incorporate new soil amendments, but you can't till them in. But you can spread them on the surface of the bed, the same way you might add mulch. Compost adds a small amount of nutrients that are released slowly, but more importantly, it helps build good soil structure. And the structure of your soil is very important. Too heavy and the clay particles stay bound together, holding too much water. But too porous and the soil falls apart, holding no water at all. Adding compost to soil helps balance out both of those issues, creating a better balance of water holding versus air holding capacity to support plant growth. Compost, being organic matter, breaks down over time due to the activity of soil microbes. This is a good thing since it releases a small amount of nutrients for your plants. But it also means that the volume of the soil diminishes slightly as the organic matter breaks down into smaller aggregates. In vegetable beds, you might add a small amount of compost when you remove your winter garden and replace it with summer crops and vice versa. In your perennial beds, you might add a thin layer of compost instead of mulch in the winter when you prune back all the top growth, followed by new mulch in the spring. Replenishing your mulch in season is similar to adding compost since bark and wood chips break down to smaller aggregates. That basically is compost. But there's no need to overdo it like having too much clay or too much sand, too much organic matter in soil also isn't good, so strike a healthy balance. Our plant this week is Mexican plum, Prunus mexicana. This small tree is one of the first to flower in the spring, bursting forth in an explosion of white. The flowers are sweetly fragrant, and of course the bees and other pollinators love them. The fruit's edible, but it's rather tart, so most people consider this tree strictly ornamental, allowing the birds and other wildlife to harvest the bounty. But if you've been wanting to try your hand at making some fresh fruit preserves, you could also use the fruit to create some lovely plum jam. Just be patient if planting a new tree. It may take several years before Mexican plum breaks out of its juvenile stage and starts to produce fruit. This lovely tree does stay pretty small, growing to about 25 feet tall and just as wide, and it has very large leaves that turn a beautiful crimson in the fall. It also has very striking bark with interesting bumps and striations. Be sure to give it plenty of water in the spring and through the summer for a good crop the following year. Fruits normally ripen from late spring through summer and early fruit drop usually indicates a lack of adequate soil moisture. We'd love to hear from you, so please head on over to klru.org to send us your questions and plants from your garden or find us on social media.